you have this um he, he start started with the maxwell equations power going through a wire pointing vector comes off dissipates power goes through a solenoid pointing vector comes off to the side dissipates solenoid of solenoid pointing vector comes off and dissipates but from standard maxwell equations if you have a coil of a coil of a coil the pointing vector closes into a loop so it doesn't dissipate it continuously adds in a vacuum current and if you have a coil of a coil of a coil of a coil you have a pointing vector that's like that and a pointing vector that's at 90 degrees and that is a stable structure it's in fact stable and they've showed that it's stable for two days so you, if you look at the structures that are produced in plasma flow water flow plasma discharges by Bogdanovich they see this these toroidal structures moving around on the metal because it's getting the electrons from the metal it's feeding itself mm -hmm. for two days the same length of time that Nevesky was cl uh, claimed uh, he was told that these things last for in the Moscow basement in 1988 and what it is when it gets up to a certain threshold it, the mag bank mag, it's able to capture virtual uh, photons and in fact it should be able to capture any photons and then what it was there was a guy called uh, David Freiberg of Stanford linear accelerator he was a ball lightning expert he attended the first uh, inaugural ball lightning meeting in Histalen in Norway in 1992 or something right and mm -hmm. there were some ball lightnings moving around in a superconducting chamber in a national lab in a paper in 2002. They didn't know what they were. And he decided to look at it with a grant from the Department of Energy. And he calculated again from, from he re, basically redid what Novesky published in 1992, having done it in 1988, right? And rather than coming up with um, these electromagnetic phantoms, he calls them vacuum currents. And he says, and he did almost exactly the same math process standing from standard Maxwell equations. And when you get up to a certain energy level, he says this shifts the diality angle and baryons then just fall apart. They literally fall apart. Hmm. They unravel. And so what you've got in the thing that's around your neck is the structure. And it's a one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's, you, we've created those things in our experiment. We have the collapse wave function of it and it's always calcium oxide in the, the actual thing and it's, it's it's a tour of tours and in fact it's a tour of tours of tours so it's, mm -hmm. it's a wheel within a wheel within a wheel that's the minimum to produ produce the vacuum current you can go further than that all the way down to in my view twice the Planck's distance right but um you, three is all you need wheel of a wheel of a wheel right mm -hmm. sorry wheel of a wheel of a wheel wheel within a wheel within a wheel within a wheel so three three levels and that produces the vacuum current and if you push it and you keep doing it resonantly the matter uh, falls apart and it and this is what Kladoff says it converts into field forms of matter you literally disassemble the matter completely hmm. uh, you unravel it so we've I think we've got a picture of an eight structure I've certainly got the impact mark of an eight um, you know, it, it needs to be a minimum of two. It's the same structure as our face. It's exact, the structure that does it is exactly our face. Um, uh, but you need a minimum of two at every fractal level. And so we've got some that have two, and then they've got 15 around the loop. Or they have three, and then there's six around the loop. Or there's six, and then there's six around the loop. Or we've got up to 48. We haven't got a full 48. We've got one with 32 divided into six uh, uh, tors and then the sub tors or whatever they are sub sub tors and these are calcium oxide because calcium oxygen and calcium oxide are all alpha part conjugate nuclei they're the most dense in packing you can get of ordinary nucleons of ordinary baryons and their oxygen calcium and calcium oxide are all paramagnetic so they can live in this intensely magnetic structure and on the outside we get everything that's diamagnetic like carbon this is why carbon gets synthesized in all these systems. Carbon, whatever, everything that's diamagnetic gets out, can't go in it. But if it goes, if it's ionized, it's then got spin and magnetic moment. It can go through the center of the structure to the phase singularity and it can be fused there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> we, it's just, I just think it's hilarious. We've got two parts of the answer around on next. Right, right. <laughs> And it's all from ancient stuff, as ancient as you can get. And I don't know how they knew. <laughs> <laughs>